Beating Fallout New Vegas with only flame weapons is by no means an astoundingly difficult task. The ammo is a little difficult to find, but you can get your first weapon and only prim, the incinerator. Which, if you really wanted to, is probably decent enough to take you to the end of the game. No, the challenge comes from the fact that I played the game on the very hard difficulty setting with a range of about 70 mods that either added brand new enemies to fight or weapons into all of the faction's loot pools. Specifically, mods like the monster mod. So where does everyone else start with an unoriginal ass video like this? Well, with a name, of course. After that comes the ever so important task of tailoring your character to what it is that you really want. I, for example, thought about the fact that my character would be using nothing but pyro weapons for the entire playthrough, so I wanted to go for something that screamed, my Sunday best is a trench coat and a fedora. Oh man, I just realized this looks just like Leafy. God damn. The years have not been kind to him since he got banned. In regards to my perk points, I wanted to go for something mostly balanced with an emphasis on strength for flamers and melee weapons, intelligence for skill points, and luck for more critical strikes. Tag skills are going to be energy weapons of course, with explosives and repair as well. I chose explosives so I could eventually choose the pyromaniac perk, which grants an additional 50% damage to all fire weapons. And repair just to improve repair. What the fuck did you expect? Now what I didn't choose for my tag skills was lockpicking and speech, because those are de facto crutch perks, and I wanted to force myself out of my comfort zone and try to solve certain situations without speak checks. You know, I thought, maybe it won't be too bad. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. After that, we take built to destroy for the higher crit chance and skilled for the bonus skill point glitch. We later change it to Wild Wasteland for fun. After a teary-eyed farewell to the good doctor, I beat the shit out of Sunny Smiles' bottles, but she didn't recognize it as a nat 20, so she didn't pay out that sweet experience. We offload all of the goodies from the DLC packs, because it'd feel a little cheap to try and sell them, and then we start hunting for the necessary items to fix up my love, Eddie. We nose around Victor's shack and spot a shit-ass pipe rifle, ignore Victor's doomsday prepper-esque arsenal of guns, and then snag some scrap metal, and that's it! Fantastic. I raided around the schoolhouse for a bit, struck nice. gold in the trailer park of Good Springs, haggled with Chet to take his belongings for free, and after burglarizing the rest of Good Springs, ended up with plenty of scrap metal and scrap electronics, but I still need one more sensor module. Shit! The next closest place that I know of to get more sensor modules is the Lone Wolf radio station. Normally, that's not going to be a big deal at all. Run past some geckos, and boom, you've got them. But then there's the monster mod. After this awful realization, I started towards Prim, made a wrong turn into a bad neighborhood, traded in the skilled perk for Wild Wasteland, but kept the benefits, and renamed my character to something a little more appropriate given his aesthetics. I broke into someone's home and he was angry at me for some reason, and now despite having never interacted with any of the powder gangers, they all suddenly want to powder ganger bang me. I am very proud of that. If you're enjoying this incredibly well-crafted and thought-provoking commentary so far, please consider subscribing and powder ganger banging the like button while you're at it. Thank you. Since I was close enough to it, I let the powder gangers chase me up the mountain towards Lone Wolf, hoping that they'd get their booties eaten out by the geckos like they were going to do to me. What I hadn't anticipated, however, is that a group of raiders would be at the radio station. Fortunately enough, they were fighting off geckos of their own. Geckos of the same variety for which were now chasing me up the mountain instead of powder gangers. Dodging their battle axes, I grabbed some metal armor and the last sensor module that I needed. I then became distracted by a flying spaghetti man and gave all the geckos that I just previously evaded plenty of time to hop right back on my ass. Further down the road, I found what I'm pretty sure was the body of one of the raiders at Lone Wolf fused inside the road. His things were now mine. And I left. In Prim, I found my first little stash of flamer fuel and ran to the Mojave Express to repair Eddie. What was that noise? Unfortunately, since I was caught before entering the building, I had to backtrack and lead the convicts to the NCR so they could kill them for me. I'm not being a bitch, I'm being resourceful. Once they succumbed to bullet poisoning, their things were now mine, and I repaired Eddie. Now that I have some little form of offense, I politely volunteered Eddie to kill every convict 
inside, outside, east side, west side, north side of the Bison Steve Hotel. Funnily enough, I found out Eddie's critical hits actually inflict burning damage. It's almost like using Eddie to get the incinerator isn't cheating in the slightest. Nope, not at all. Shuck it, nerds! <laughs> Finally, the daddy dom of the escaped convicts came out to face Eddie. As soon as I saw the incinerator drop, I sprinted for it and vored the weapon so I could feel it burn inside me. But when I opened my Pip-Boy, it wasn't in my inventory. What the fuck? What, where is it? I figured, goofy old game doing goofy stupid shit, and thought that the weapon might have been on another corpse, so I checked all the dead bodies where the incinerator was and still couldn't find it. Sure enough, as I said, goofy game, goofy shit, reopening the Pip-Boy saw it appear in my inventory this time. This would be a little glitch that would happen to me a few times through the playthrough, and nearly every time it threw me for a loop. Finally, incinerator in hand, I could not persuade the beagle to join me, so I had to put down the bad dog. You know, in hindsight, I'm just now realizing that the first human death by my hands is of a helpless man bound and completely at the mercy of a situation unfolding around him. <laughs> he most certainly presumed I was going to save him. Yeah. Bye. Anyway, I started blasting. Bow, bow. And that's exactly what I did as soon as I got crossed. Second kill, also an innocent man. A machine such as this should not sit idly by. Its machine spirit must be satiated with blood and barbecues. Jeez, sorry about that. I'm just a big fan of 40k. Not really sure what else I can say about that. By the way, if anyone was curious, once the playthrough was over, the game judged me to be an absolute fiend by the time that I was done in the Mojave. After my second completely justifiable defensive maneuver, I ran past the police station and passed a woman taking her rad scorpions on a walk. Sold some shit and decided that Eddie was going to ruin any of the challenge in this challenge run if I continued any further with him, so he had to leave. I spoke to Ranger Ghost for a chance at that experience and headed towards where I spotted a Jackal gang member with a flamer. Fortunately, a frontal assault wasn't necessary because the local wildlife was just as bloodthirsty as I was. His things were now mine. I hit a woman, I'm hit. broke apart a domestic dispute, and then tried to find the root of the quarrel before bullet poisoning took. But being a therapist is hard, so I just cooked them. Both an incredible display of restraint and surprising amount of mercy were shown to Oliver Swanick. I don't really know what my morals are. I immediately pledged my service to this dog man, and then immediately broke that pledge of service for juicy experience. If you've ever played New Vegas before, then you would know that the next obvious path towards the Strip would be from Nipton towards Novak via the road leading from Nipton that crosses the railroad tracks. I, however, did not want to take this road because I knew that I wouldn't be able to defend myself from any of the raiders that hide in the cliffs, so I instead went through the mountains to the right of the railroad tracks. Big fucking mistake. What was supposed to be the easy path resulted in me having to deal with fiends, run from a herd of bighorners, sandwich myself between said herd of bighorners and a skirmish between the legion and actual serial killers, and then run from more bighorners. I stopped at Wolfhorn Ranch after running for about five minutes, and then after setting out on the road, was instantly chased by a giant black spider, which the legion so generously distracted for me while I ran right into another creature that wanted to eat my lunch. Finally, I made it to Novak, and better yet, found some more flamer fuel for my weapon, watched Genie Mae's head explode into Kool-Aid, and then set back on the road towards New Vegas. Very happy with my progress, as you can see. It's mostly just a straight shot towards my ancillary target. Obviously, you need to get to Benny and then the Lucky 38 to really progress in the story, but before I do that, I need to get to the Silver Rush. There, we can find one of the two main weapons I intend to use, the Cleansing Flame. But before that, I still have to deal with some Vipers, avoid a Hell Beast, get gooed on by some Slug Thing, run from this, run from this, and then get chased by whatever the fuck this is. I finally make it to the 188 trading post, but everyone is spooked and starts fleeing towards the Strip. 
I figure I'll follow along with the crowd. I'm already heading in that direction. I split off from the group when I made it to the overpass near Repcon headquarters, and after fending off some NCR deserters, I made my way to the gun runners where I thought I was going to be able to sell all my shit. You have got to be fucking kidding me. I sold what I could and ran to the Silver Rush where I browsed all of their fine products. We're watching you closely. Oh yeah, I'm real sure you are, buddy. But ultimately, I decided I didn't really want any of it, so I just gave it back to the friendly cashier and instead just decided to grab the Cleansing Flame. Whatever. The Cleansing Flame is arguably the best flame weapon in Fallout New Vegas. Even when put up against the Heavy Incinerator, the Saturnine Fist Superheated Variant, or the Gehenna, the Cleansing Flame has overall better damage and range than the Standard Flamer and additionally has a damage over time effect that increases based on your energy weapon skill. Best of all, the plan is to pair the Cleansing Flame with five specific perks. Confirmed Bachelor and Lady Killer will give me an additional 10% damage towards male and female human enemies alike. Bloody Mess, for obvious reasons. It's additional 5% damage. I mean, duh, it's just fun. And the two more important ones. Pyromaniac, which increases all fire-based weapon damage by 50%. And best of all, Meltdown, which causes all enemies killed with energy weapons to explode in a ball of plasma. We already have Bloody Mess, Confirmed Bachelor, and Lady Killer, but before we can get the other two, we still need a little experience. So right now would just about be the best time to go and see Benny. Unfortunately, Now what I didn't choose for my tag skills was lockpicking and speech. And without that crutch, I have just completely face-planted and broken my nose. So what do I do now? I committed myself to not specking in speech, and because of that, I can't take Benny down the Hershey Highway all by our loathsome selves and get the chip back. Hi. Anyway, I started blasting. Whoa, whoa. I will make that joke as many times as I want. Burning a man until his insides boil up and explode isn't socially acceptable, I suppose. So with the platinum chip in hand and dick in other, I ran straight to Call Mr. House's back. house. You've been a busy courier, haven't you? His lauding tone, slick back hair, and that Clark Gable mustache instantly solidified my unwavering commitment to the computer man. House was now my daddy. After House showed what his male performance enhancement could do for the Securitrons, I was about to set out for the Legion's fort so I could upload the chip when I suddenly remembered that I had unfinished business in Good Springs. Got the experience. I paid another quick visit to Doc Mitchell. How are you holding up? Grabbed all the meds I forgot about at the start of the playthrough, and then made my way from Wolfhorn Ranch towards Camp Searchlight when I found a lone wandering Securitron. Enjoy all the Vegas Strip has to offer. And then a creature that will undoubtedly haunt my dreams for the next few weeks. So after that thing clapped me, I decided I might run around Searchlight instead. I watched the Legion deal with the repercussions of their own actions, and then strolled on down the road where just like at the 188 trading post, the surrounding Legionaries all ran away. So I paddled myself down the river, met up with Mr. Salad dressing himself, immediately pledged my service to him, immediately broke my pledge of service for Daddy House, and after blasting my way through some bots, I was able to install the Platinum Chip and activate House's army of Securitrons inside the bunker beneath Fortification Hill. Of course, I still played Caesar, for the experience, of course. After the Securitrons had been activated, House tasked me with contacting and establishing a partnership with the Boomers. I, however, detest geriatrics and decided to instead go and see the Great Cons. We go back to Good Springs and take the road north from there, past all the red signs that I can't read. It's been so long since I've traveled the road north from Good Springs that I genuinely forgot how difficult Cazadors were, and because of that, I always chalked it up to just being a meme. But no. The Cazadors tossed my salad so bad that after finishing them all, and a Deathclaw, I grabbed the fast travel location for Vault 19, 
restocked on stim packs, and when I fast traveled back to Vault 19, was attacked by a band of fiends, one of which gave me a whopping 1300 experience. And with that nice chunk of change in the bank, I was now high enough level for our first clutch perk, Pyromaniac. Which if you don't remember, just buffed all of my fire-based damage by 50%. I tested out this nice little buff on the raiders at Bonnie Springs, cooked some big horner steak, bartered, and then made my way back to Red Rock Canyon. I introduced myself to Papa Smurf, but a primal urge came over me that told me that his hat and all his things should be mine. On top of acquiring an absolutely beautiful hat that just as well clipped through everything else on my face, I found these cool dual 357s which were both monetarily and physically worthless to me, but for some reason held a strange sense of emotional value, so I kept them. After fleeing from Red Rock, I traveled to Hidden Valley so I could establish some basic connection with the Brotherhood and just be done with them. But once again, I stumbled from my lack of crutches and could not pick the lock of the bunker door to get in. That's when I had the idea, just go grab Veronica and have her open the door for me. As soon as I got to the bunker, I kicked her ass to the curb, introduced myself to Elder McNamara and all of his goons, and unlocked a brand new merchant to buy flamer fuel from. Finally, I decided it was time to go see the boomers, and without particularly paying attention, I ended up traveling in the wrong direction for about 10 minutes. When I reached Nellis, I stripped down naked and elegantly dodged every attack that the boomer sent my way. I cooked Pearl's wrinkly chicken gizzard, traded with the gun runners, and got a stern talking to from Mr. House. It seems diplomacy is not your forte. He and I might not see eye to eye with my actions, but we both know that he needs me, so I'm sent to make contact with Gamora, and I do so in the most efficient and non-biased way possible. I just grilled the very first person that I saw. Dirty coward. You're useless. House just can't appreciate my skills. As punishment for my actions, Daddy House made me go and kill all my new friends I just made at Hidden Valley. And let me tell you, that did not go well for me. It's not a skill problem. I just need more experience. I headed back to Cottonwood Cove with the idea that I can just rush through that location and the fort and just wipe out all the legionaries to level up. But one of my mods actually added a cellar at Cottonwood Cove and when I entered, it was basically its own dungeon. Right now, the plan is to level up and unlock the Autodidact perk via the More Perks mod. And after clearing out Cottonwood Cove, I'm going to go to the Deathclaw Promontory and grab a set of Enclave Remnants Power Armor. Once I have that, I'll be a little more protected against the Brotherhood once I go and try and raid their bunker again. You know, thinking about it right now, I can see that maybe some of you might have a problem with that. You might think that having a mod that gives me the ability to use power armor through the perk point system, make things just a little too easy for me. And you might say, well, what's the point of calling it a challenge run? You know, just watch this little clip right here and it'll help explain how I feel about that. Thanks guys. If I cared about that shit, I would not have used Eddie in the first five minutes of the video. Hello, anybody home? Think fly. Think. Papa wants a little sip of that Nuka-Cola too, you know. Unfortunately, said Nuka-Cola is completely tapped out because the Remnant's power armor that was supposed to be here isn't here because it's locked behind a crate that I cannot pick. After I finished crying in the corner of my room, I decided to stop by the gun runners and trade for the Gehenna and then go get the subdermal implant to bump my damage threshold a little. And then suddenly, as if the few neurons that my brain could still produce electric signals from all contacted each other at once, in an instant I remembered that I can just buy the winterized T-51 power armor from the Brotherhood before I attack them. But shit, I'm all out of money. And for the second time during this playthrough, in a span of only 30 seconds, I realized that I was an idiot. I created a character 
with a high amount of luck points for crits. Just go to the two remaining casinos that don't want to kill me and gamble. No shit. And that's exactly what I did. I cleaned out house at the White Gloves and then at the Garrett's, ran to Hidden Valley, purchased the T-51 set, and got to work. I heard some special squad. With Elder McNamara dead and all of the control keys gathered, I went to Hidden Valley's main network terminal, generated a password, and set the bunker to self-destruct. I made sure to give Ramos a quick and painless death on my way out so he didn't have to burn when the bunker exploded, and then watched the fireworks. For the first time ever, I came home to my adoptive father with news that he actually approved of. Now all I need to do before I storm the dam is upload an override module to the NCR substation control room, and best of all, I've finally unlocked Meltdown. Hooray! I ran from the 188 trading post, In the nude! Slipped past the NCR when they became distracted with some geckos, and installed the module into the terminal. When I left the substation, I was able to see what had attacked the NCR and allowed me to slip by unseen. I met with Victor on top of a hillside and gave him the news. Just after we talked, Brotherhood of Steel, Legionaries, and Great Cons all spawned in just past the ledge of the cliff that I had been standing on and instantly began attacking me. Fortunately for me, they all just so happened to be clumped together, and I just so happened to have the Meltdown perk now. A group of 12 or so enemies, all dead with four explosions. So if you ever decide to try out an energy weapons build, now you know to use Meltdown. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! I went home to Iron Man's dad and initiated the final fight for Hoover Dam. With the help of a whopping one Securitron to back me up, I fought past the Legion, sliced up the NCR for the first time, and installed the override chip into the control box. My Securitron and I were greeted when we entered the Legate's gate, but then he suddenly exploded. Now, at the tail end of the playthrough, I am finally face to face with the Legate, and since there is absolutely zero chance of hashing this out, I didn't even give him a chance to speak. The Legate was surprisingly hard to kill. The difficulty had been on very hard for the entirety of the playthrough, but at this point, with Pyromaniac and a maxed out energy weapon skill, the Cleansing Flame deals about 600 damage per second. Each iota of fuel, which has a decent chance to critically strike the Legate. Eventually, I was able to whittle down the Legate's health, and he popped just like the rest of his men. I cleared the rest of the camp, and then was temporarily blinded by General Oliver. I can't say that I appreciated this so much, so I decided to blind Oliver and his men in return. The Gehenna and Cleansing Flame were honestly much better weapons than I was expecting. Anytime I've ever played a melee character, I always use the Chainsaw because it's my favorite weapon and I have never done an energy weapons playthrough, so I didn't realize how much fun Meltdown was going to be. I feel like the mods that I had installed offered a tamer experience than what I was probably trying to aim for. So if you'd like to see another video like this, then I'm really going to hammer down on more game altering mods that make the video a little more unique. Otherwise, if there's something else you would like to see me do, please let me know. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Fallout related. I'm open to hearing any and all suggestions you might have. Thank you so much for watching.